I'm pleased to welcome our second speaker, Chiara Marletto. She's a quantum physicist working at the University of Oxford. She's a bit of a polymath. She's dabbled in Italian literature, engineering science, and quantum computation. Currently, she's working with David Deutsch on constructor theory, which is a new fundamental theory of physics. And this touches on ideas that have been traditionally regarded as highly emergent and derivative. So for example, information, human knowledge, and the nature of life. Let's welcome Chiara to the stage. Uh, thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, I'll try to give a physicist's perspective on uh, extinction. So, I'll start with a thought uh, that is that, um, well, evolution is a physical process. And uh, what we mean by that is that whether or not it can occur and under what circumstances is set by the laws of physics that are the rules that control and constrain the behavior of every object in our universe. And the very fact that extinction can occur tells us a very remarkable fact about our universe. That is to say that there are things that are capable of undergoing extinction. So what are those things? Well, they have several distinctive properties. But in the first place, they must display some sort of resiliency, a tendency to remain instantiated in physical systems. Now, under our laws of physics, physical systems have a tendency to fade away. So the only way that resiliency can be achieved is by those things to being copied from one physical instantiation to a new one when the former is about to wear out. And that is the very reason this resiliency is the very reason why we talk about they're going extinct at all. So to understand what I mean, um, consider a bacterium, for instance. What can go extinct is not the particular set of atoms that instantiates the bacterium, because that changes every moment. What can go extinct is the recipe for the bacterium, is its genome, its DNA sequence, which can last for billions of years. That is what biologists call a replicator. And uh, it has the property of uh, being copied from one generation to another. And in fact, it has the property of striving uh, for being copied. It can cause transformations that are directed to its own replication and retain the property of doing so again and again. So what we've uh, now come to is that um, what can undergo extinction can be generally characterized as being a replicator that tends to remain instantiated in physical systems and can cause transformation to occur, retaining the property of causing them again and again. Now, there is a new fundamental theory of physics uh, that's called constructor theory, and uh, that was proposed, proposed by David Deutsch, uh, who, is, um, who pioneered the theory of the universal quantum computer. And uh, David and I are working on this theory together. Uh, the fundamental idea in this theory is that we formulate all laws of physics in terms of what tasks are possible, what are impossible, and why. And uh, in this theory, uh, we have an exact physical characterization of an object that has those properties. And we call that knowledge. Um, and note that Knowledge here means knowledge without a knowing subject, as in uh, the theory of knowledge of the philosopher Karl Popper. Now, we've just come to the conclusion that the fact that extinction is possible means that knowledge can be instantiated in our physical world. And uh, in fact, extinction is the very process by which that knowledge is disabled in its ability to remain instantiated in physical systems because there are problems that it cannot solve. And with any luck, that bit of knowledge can be replaced 
with a better one. In constructor theory, knowledge has a central role because uh, it's a principle of a constructor theory that uh, whatever transformation is not forbidden by the laws of physics can be performed to arbitrarily high accuracy provided that the requisite knowledge is created. And note that there are no intermediate possibilities. Either something is forbidden by the laws of physics or it can be achieved given enough knowledge. Now, uh, this places knowledge center stage in our universe and in fundamental physics. So how does knowledge come about? Well, here we come to extinction again because the laws of physics uh, do not contain knowledge in this sense. Neither do the initial conditions of our universe. The theory that they do, the idea that they do, uh, which is called creationism, is anathema to everyone here. And uh, um, so it's an interesting insight from constructor theory that the only way knowledge can be created under these laws of physics is by a non-directed process of trial and error correction steps. And this is true of both uh, natural selection and of the knowledge creating process that occurs in people's minds. But here we come to a fundamental distinction between the two because uh, in natural selection, the only way a non-adequate th theory or idea, uh, a non-adequate recipe for a bacterium can uh, undergo extinction is by actual death of the organism that it happens to be traveling in about. And uh, this is a feature of natural selection, but it need not be so in general uh, for extinction. In fact, in human minds, what happens is that whenever a theory is found to be parochial, that is to say it, there are problems it cannot solve, the way it is eliminated, the way it undergoes extinction is by criticism. And criticism is uh, tentatively directed to progress, and it's a fundamentally nonviolent process, um, and uh, which does involve death, if not of obstructions. Uh, so, as Karl Popper put it, we can let our ideas die in our place. So, it seems that with uh, the emergence of thinking abilities, which of course emerged by a natural selection a new kind of extinction has become possible. Uh, one that does involve death, one that is based on criticism and on actually criticizing abstractions. And uh, so it is this kind of extinction which is not only crucial for the creation of new knowledge, but with a constructor theoretic insight, it is part of the very process uh, where our endeavors to create, to perform transformations that are not forbidden by the laws of physics take place. And uh, so this is how constructor theory lets us see how extinction can be a constructor for future possibilities. Thank you for listening.